Most international law experts believe that China's so-called indisputable sovereignty over its maritime claim in the South China Sea has little merit, and is illegal under the United Convention on the Law of the Sea. The United States said that China's expansive claim increase the risk of confrontation, undermine regional stability, and dim the prospects for diplomacy, and pave the way for U.S. pivot to Pacific. Philippines declares the claim is illegal and violates Philippines and other nations' sovereign rights under UNCLOS. The Vietnamese president said that it has no legal foundation and scientific basis and rejected China's assertion. China defends its claim citing historical basis, most of which were taken from its imperial archives and ancient records. It has recently intensified its claim in the South China Sea which many believe to be a gunboat diplomacy against its weaker maritime neighbors. South China Sea is composed of three main areas, Spratlys, the biggest, Paracel, the next biggest, and Scarborough Shoal, the smallest. All of them are being claimed by People's Republic of China and Taiwan. Spratlys is also being claimed partly by the Philippines, Vietnam, Brunei, Malaysia, and Indonesia, Scarborough by the Philippines, and Paracel by Vietnam. Reason number 10, Ancient Relics of Pottery coins and sunken ships do not confer ownership. In 1755, archaeological surveys of the remains of Chinese pottery and coins have been found in the islands, and are cited as proof for the Chinese claim. While those remains could have been Chinese in origin, their ownership can be disputed. These archaeological relics could have been from the Southeast Asian merchant ships that sunk returning to ancient Philippines, Borneo. Indonesia and Malaysia. On the other hand, if these relics belong to China, then it can only be surmised that the ancient Chinese were not familiar with the area as many part of Spratlys were treacherous to navigators with little knowledge of the sea. Similarly, the fact that has been no reported relics of Southeast Asian origins recovered in the area suggests that ancient Malaya Polynesians were more familiar with the Spratlys and had been traversing its span for a much longer period of time. Chinese silk and porcelain were valuable commodities at the time and it was very common for merchant ships to carry these in their voyage back home. In some cases, these ships could have been carrying gifts to Southeast Asian kings, sultans and rajas. There is also a remote possibility that pirates could have kept those treasures on the islands or their ships loaded with loot sunk during bad weathers. Moreover, if we apply the Chinese reasoning to majority of shipwrecks that were discovered all over the world, then the former naval powers of the world will be claiming islands where their goods, gold, coins and artifacts were found. This will give England a valid claim to Florida Keys, the Bahamas, Bermuda in the Americas, Marianas in the Pacific, Sumatra and Java in Indonesia, and Majima Island in the southeast in Japan, Portugal to Christmas and St. George Islands in Nova Scotia, and French to British Crown's Guernsey Island. Similarly, should the Indonesians, Filipinos, Borneans and Malaysians claim Madagascar and Seychelles in the Indian Oceans because ancient potteries found all over these islands are of Malay origin? Reason number 9, South China Sea was never a territory under the Mongol Empire and any Chinese dynasty. China claims that since the Yuan dynasty in 1271, several islands that may be the Spratlys have been labeled as Chinese territory followed by the Ming Dynasty, and the Qing Dynasty from the 1368 to 1911. China's claim that a Chinese voyager supposedly drew the 13th century 9- map can't be further than the truth. China at the time was under foreign invasion by the Mongols that forbade maritime activities. Mongols tried to look beyond China, but was never successful in its advance beyond Indochina. Kublai Khan's costly invasions of Burma, Annam, Sakhalin and Champa, or modern Vietnam, secured only the vassal status of those countries. 
Mongol invasions of Japan, in 1274 and 1280, and Java, in 1293, failed. Chinese trades during the early Mongol Empire was concentrated between neighboring inland nations. Well-traveled and relatively well-maintained roads linked lands from the Mediterranean basin to China, greatly increasing overland trade and resulting to the emergence of the famed Silk Road, that greatly contributed to the civilization of the different dynasties of Europe, India, Central Asia and China. Admiral Zihe would not embark on his famed explorations until another 200 years, to kick off trade with the maritime Southeast Asians. Only in another 200 years would the Chinese begin its massive influx into today's Taiwan, displacing the earlier Austronesian inhabitants of the island. China also claims that they discovered Spratlys as early as 200 BC. However, their imperial records show only references and general description of the islands. There were also mention of earlier maps, but China does not hold any map that show the islands as part of their territory. This can be attributed to China as being a land-based power, with a long history of quarreling kingdoms, and didn't have any opportunity to project power beyond its shores. This is why old China's maps show the Hainan Island as its southernmost territory, a fitting Chinese name which means end of the earth. Reason number 8, Malaya Polynesians discovered South China Sea first before Chinese did. Contrary to China's claim that Chinese voyagers discovered the Spratlys, Scarborough Shoal and Paracel Islands it was the Malaya Polynesians, a subgroup of Austronesian peoples and descendants of the Filipinos, Indonesians, Borneans and Malaysians that discovered them. The seafaring Malaya Polynesians were the first settlers of maritime Southeast Asia, Austronesia and Melanesia, were well versed in oceanography and had long roamed the Pacific Ocean and South China Sea and reached as far as Indian Ocean, East Africa and South America. The Australo-Melanesian population had inhabited the Philippine Luzon Islands since about 23,000 years ago, much earlier than 200 BC, the period that China purportedly claims to have discovered the Spratlys and other islands around it. Over the next thousand years, Austronesian peoples migrated southeast to the rest of the Philippines, and into the islands of the Celebes Sea, Borneo, and Indonesia. The Austronesian peoples of maritime Southeast Asia sailed eastward, and spread to the islands of Melanesia and Micronesia between 1200 BC and 500 AD respectively. Sailing from Melanesia, and Micronesia, the Austronesian peoples discovered Polynesia by 1000 BC. These people settled most of the Pacific Islands. They settled Easter Island by 300 AD, Hawaii by 400 AD, and into New Zealand by about 1280 AD. In the Indian Ocean they sailed west from maritime Southeast Asia. The Austronesian peoples reached Madagascar by 0 to 500 AD bringing caribos, banana and rice paddy agriculture to the island. There is also evidence, based in the spreading of the sweet potato and coconuts, that they reached South America where they traded with the American natives. History shows that Chinese were latecomers in the South China Sea. China's own official records reveal, when the 4th century Buddhist pilgrim Farsian, went to Sri Lanka, he traveled from China to Sumatra, and then on to Sri Lanka in Malay ships. The 10th century Arab traveler and geographer, Al Masudi, made reference to the Cham Sea and trade between Champa and Luzon was well established long before the Chinese drew their 13th century map. Thus, it would be most logical, as Scarborough Shoal not only lies close to the Luzon coast, but is on the direct route from Manila Bay to the ancient Cham ports of Hoan and Kinhan, it was known to the ancient Filipinos and Vietnamese sailors long ago. Reason number 7, China claim the Japanese ceded Spratlys and Paracel to China is false. After World War II, 
China didn't enjoy much leverage as the other major allied nations of the United States, Britain and Russia on any post-war negotiations concerning Japanese-occupied territories, that included Spartleys and Paracel Islands, because there wasn't a unified or victorious China to negotiate with. The country was in the middle of a civil war between the nationalist factions, led by Chiang Kai-shek, and the communist forces of Mao Zedong. To make the matter worse, both the Communist People's Republic of China and the Nationalist Republic of China, Taiwan, were claiming the Spratlys and Paracel as their own. Six years after the war, at the 1951 San Francisco Conference on the Peace Treaty with Japan, the Soviet Union proposed that the Spratlys and Paracel belong to the People's Republic of China. This move was overwhelmingly rejected by the delegates. The text of the Treaty of San Francisco listed the Spratlys and Paracel as excluded of the list of territories to be returned to China. In addition, the 1943 Cairo Declaration, drafted by the Allies and the Nationalist Government of China towards the end of World War II, listed the territories that the Allies intended to strip from Japan and return to China. Despite Republic of China being among the authors of the declaration, this list did not include the Spratlys and Paracel. Reason number 6, Spratlys, Paracels and Scarborough weren't in China's maps until much recently. The cartographic records that the Chinese to be claiming that show trading routes with Southeast Asia through Spratlys were navigational charts, and not maps that depict the extent of its marine territories. Chinese imperial records show only references and general description of the islands. Official imperial maps in Chinese historical archives show Hainan Island as its southernmost territory and do not include Spratlys, Paracel and Scarborough as territories suggesting that the Chinese maritime claim as a recent afterthought. Chinese maps showing Spratlys Islands Paracel Islands and Scarborough Shoal only started to appear in Chinese textbooks in 1947. Since then, Chinese students have been thought that most of the South China Sea belongs to China. Older maps show Scarborough Shoal, which China grabbed in 2012, to belong to the Philippines. The Carte Hydrographica e Carographica de las Islas Filipinas, dating back to 1734, calls Scarborough the Panacot Shoal. A subsequent map published in Madrid in 1808, of the 1792 Malaspina expedition, includes it in Philippine territory as Bohodomus Inlook. Yet another topographic map drawn in 1820 shows Boho Scarborough as part of the province of Zambales, Philippines. Two other maps, the Mapa General, Islas Filipinas, Observatorio de Manila of the 1910s, and the U.S. Coast and Geodetic Survey of the 1920s, place it within the Philippines as Bahodamus Inlook. The French also have a compilation of earlier 19th century maps showing Spratlys and Scarborough as part of the Philippines. Vietnam is also in possession of an earlier 1904 map printed by the Shanghai Publishing House, showing Hainan Island Province as China's southernmost territory, and the Spratlys and Parasols as part of Vietnam. Reason number 5, China's Nine Dash Claim is a Chinese historical revision. In 1947, China produced a map with 11 undefined dash lines, the predecessor of today's nine dash lines, without any coordinates and claimed all of the islands within those lines. Chinese claim covers 90% of the South China Sea, including the islands, reefs and atolls within them, extending within the exclusive economic zones of the Philippines, Malaysia, Brunei, Indonesia, and Vietnam. The nine dash claim is illegal under the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, as it extends beyond the 12 nautical mile territorial waters of China, a non-archipelagic state. China justifies its exaggerated claim because ancient Chinese writings mentioned some of the islands in the South China Sea, arguing that they were there first. However, based on historical facts, the ancient Malaya Polynesians, the descendants of the Filipinos, Indonesians, Borneans and Malaysians discovered the islands first. 
the maritime Southeast Asians were seafaring people, and the first to discover and fished in the South China Sea and Pacific Ocean, several millennia before the Chinese reached these waters. These ancient people traveled through Indian Ocean, all the way to Madagascar and Seychelles Islands in West Africa and South America. Though the ancient Malayo-Polynesians didn't have any writing knowledge and didn't record their voyages, it would be unimaginable to deny them of their discovery of these islands that were so close to them, and in light of their discovery of the much bigger Pacific Ocean and Indian Ocean. Also, the ancient Filipinos had a far-reaching trades with the other people within the maritime Southeast Asia, including the early inhabitants of Malayo-Polynesian Kingdom of Champa since 7 AD suggesting that traders from both sides of the South China Sea had been using the Spratlys as trade routes and shelters. This was 800 years before the much vaunted voyages of Chinese Admiral Zheng He in the 15th century. Moreover, Chinese recorded texts referred to the islands in South China Sea as foreign lands, and not part of their territories. These writings describe only general knowledge of the islands and do not record any activities that suggest any Chinese jurisdiction over them. As in the case of Scarborough Shoal, its old name is Panakot or Bahodamasinluk, which means under Masinluk. Although Bahodamasinluk is Hispanized name, Panakot and Masinluk are not Spanish, but the names given to them by the ancient Filipino fishermen, in their mother tongue, giving more credence that the Filipinos had been the first. It was only in 1935 when Chinese official records stated that the shoal, which it mentioned by its renowned western name Scarborough Shoal, was part of its Zongshu Islands. It was only in 1947 that China initiated the shoal with its first Chinese name, Men Zhuzhou, or Democracy Reef. Reason number 4, China's Creeping Invasion in 1991, after the United States pulled out its two biggest overseas military bases from Clark Air Base and Subic Naval Base in the Philippines, China has intensified its territorial claim in the South China Sea. In February 1995, the Philippines discovered Chinese structures built in Mischief Reef, a Philippine-held territory which is only 130 miles from Palawan Island. When the Philippine government protested, the Chinese rejected the protest and stressed that they were only shelters for Chinese fishermen. It turned out that the Chinese were actually building a military garrison. In 1999, Philippines protested again when Chinese added more structures that appeared to be military communication installation. China still occupies Mischief Reef up to this day. China was also reported to have planted buoys in Sabina Shoal twice in 1998, a much closer reef from Palawan which is just 70 miles away. In April 2012, a Philippine Navy surveillance plane spotted eight Chinese fishing vessels docked at the waters of Scarborough Shoal and discovered illegally collected corals, giant clams and live sharks inside one of the vessels. When the Philippine Navy inspection team attempted to arrest the Chinese fishermen, they were blocked by two Chinese maritime surveillance ships. That incident led to a standoff between the two countries that lasted two months, with the Philippines literally losing the ground after it fell victim to China's double cross. After over a month of playing a game of brinkmanship against each other, with neither side backing down, Beijing and Manila agreed to pull their ships out of the shoal to prevent any further tension. The Philippines withdrew their vessels but the China reneged on its promise. A few days after Chinese left the shoal, two Chinese CMS vessels returned with paramilitary dinghies in tow and cordoned off the area. Filipino fishermen, journalists and any vessels that come close the shoal are promptly turned away and warned not to come back. China has been occupying the Scarborough Shoal since April 2012. In September 2013, the Philippines has also complained about the presence of Chinese Navy vessels near the Manila-controlled 2nd Thomas Shoal in the Spratly Islands. The Philippines alleged China's actions in South China Sea as part of China's creeping invasion. Some regional analysts have described the mischief Reef and Scarborough occupation as an effective annexation by Beijing of Philippines territories.
a strategy of acquiring sovereign territories using direct or indirect military force by a much powerful state, reminiscent of Nazi Germany and Imperial Japan's actions that sparked World War II more than 50 years ago. Reason number three, Spratlys and Scarborough are outside China's territorial waters. The United Nations Convention on the Laws of the Sea, or UNCLOS, sets the territorial limit from a nation's coastline to 12 nautical miles, or 14 miles, from the baseline. The coastal state is free to set laws, regulate use, and use any resource. It also defines exclusive economic zone, or EEZ that extends from the edge of the territorial sea out to 200 nautical miles, or 230 miles, from the baseline. Within this area, the adjacent coastal nation has sole exploitation rights over all natural resources. The EEZ was introduced to halt the increasingly heated clashes over fishing rights, although oil was also becoming important. UNCLOS replaces the older and weaker freedom of the seas concept, dating from the 17th century which states that national rights were limited to a specified belt of water extending from a nation's coastlines three nautical miles. This is one of the main bases of China's claim. Philippines and China are both parties to UNCLOS, having signed it in 1982. Philippines ratified it in 1984 and China in 1996. China even made a note of verbal upon ratification that it shall enjoy sovereign rights and jurisdiction over an exclusive economic zone of 200 nautical miles and the continental shelf despite the fact that China is not an archipelagic state which can only claim 12 nautical miles of territorial waters. Scarborough is 530 miles away from China's nearest territory of Hainan Island, and is way out of its territorial limit. Scarborough on the other hand is only 137 miles from Zambales, province of the Philippines. Philippine farthest claim in the Spratlys is 145 miles from Palawan Island while the nearest is 80 miles from the same island, China which claims all of South China Sea is around 560 miles from the Spratlys. Reason number 2, China's undisputed sovereignty assertion is flawed. China says that since it declared its Nine Dash claim in 1947, it predates and so is unbound by the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, and further noted that no country immediately protested. Thus, they argue that it has at least a nominal historical authority over the water. However, in 1982 UNCLOS, several countries rejected China's claim of historical sovereignty over the dotted lines and does not exist in the 1982 UNCLOS ruling. Any historical sovereignty claim must be able to show a nation has had a peaceful and long-lasting rule over an area and it must be acknowledged by nations based on internationally accepted laws at that time. Although the Chinese Kuomintang government first introduced the 11-Lion claim in 1947, which was later reduced to 9-Lions, it was only in May 7, 2009 that China issued an official note concerning the claim formally bringing the Nine Dash Line map to global attention. However, Chinese assertion based on historical claims must be substantiated by a clear historic title. It should be noted that under public international law, historical claims are not historical titles and could not be a basis for acquiring a territory. Under international law, the modes of acquiring a territory are, discovery, effective occupation, prescription, session, and accretion. Also, under public international law, for a historical claim to mature into a historical title, a mere showing of long usage is not enough. China has neither shown any of admissible historic title nor exhibited legal acts of acquiring their claims based on the internationally accepted rules of law and unclosed provisions. In addition, other criteria have to be satisfied, such as, that the usage must be open, continuous, adverse, or, in the concept of an owner, peaceful and acquiesced by other states. Mere silence by other states to one's claim is not acquiescence under international law. 
acquiescence must be affirmative, such that other states recognize such claim as a right on the part of the claimant, that other states ought to respect as a matter of duty. There is no indication that the international community have acquiesced to China's so-called historical claim on Chinese contention that Chinese fishermen have used the South China Sea for a long time. Fishing right is not a mode of acquiring sovereignty, or even sovereign rights, over an area, but merely an economic activity done by individuals or private entities. Neither could it be construed that the act of fishing by Chinese fishermen is a sovereign act of a state, nor can be considered as a display of state authority. In relation to name giving and maps, name giving, or names in general, and placing of land features on maps, these are also not bases in determining sovereignty. In international case law relating to questions of sovereignty and ownership of land features, names and maps are not significant factors in the determination of international tribunals determination of sovereignty. On the other hand, Records show that Philippines has exercised both effective occupation and effective jurisdiction over its claims since the American administration. Scarborough show entered Philippine jurisprudence in 1916 when the Philippine Supreme Court decided a case involving a shipwreck within the Shoals proximity. The shipwreck predates China's 1935 claim. In 1957, the Philippine government conducted an oceanographic survey of the area, and together with the U.S. Navy force based in the then U.S. Naval Base Subic Bay in Zambales, used the area as an impact range for defense purposes. In 1965, a small lighthouse was built and operated by the military. In the same year an 8.3-meter high flagpole flying a Philippine flag was raised. In 1992, the Philippine Navy rehabilitated the lighthouse and reported it to the International Maritime Organization for publication in the list of lights. The Philippines Department of Environment and Natural Resources, together with the University of the Philippines, has also been conducting scientific, topographic, and marine studies in the shoal. In regards to Philippines Pratley's claims, in 1946, Vice President Elpidio Quirino reiterated that the Southern Islands, the forerunner name for Calayan, as part of the Philippines. In May 1956, Thomas Cloma, a Filipino explorer and businessman declared the founding of the new municipality he called Calayan, or Freedom Land, and claimed about 50 features of the Spratlys group but ceded them to the Philippine government a few months later. The Philippines sent troops to the Spratlys group for the first time in 1968. By the end of the 1970s, the Philippines had occupied a total of eight islands and two reefs. To further its claim on the island group, the Philippine government incorporated the Calayan group into Palawan province as a municipality in April 1972, and claimed in 1974 that its location rendered it strategically important to Philippine national security. In March 1976, the late President Marcos issued the Letter of Instruction No. 176, organizing the AFP Western Command based in Palawan in response to the heightening conflict of interest in the region, and to abate any untoward incident. In 1978, the Philippine Presidential Decree No. 1599, underscored the fact that Calayan is within the Philippine 200-mile exclusive economic zone. Elections have been held on Calayan Islands since 1980 when Mr. Alona Heralda was elected as the first municipal mayor. Manila-based Smart Telecommunications established a cell site, connected to its main network via VSAT on the island in 2005. Most recently in 2009, when the Philippines passed an amended archipelagic baselines law that is fully consistent with international laws, Scarborough Shoal and Spratlys were classified under the regime of islands consistent with the international laws. Moreover, Philippine control of the waters within its territories in Scarborough and Spratlys is affected by frequent patrols and policing of these waters for decades without protest from many other country claimants, including arrests of Chinese, 
Vietnamese, Malaysian and Taiwanese fishermen illegally fishing in Philippine jurisdiction or using illegal fishing methods in its waters. China only began occupying features by mid-1980s, causing the ASEAN plan of jointly developing the area to halt. The most controversial occupation of China is the Philippine-controlled mischief reef in 1995. Reason number 1, China rejects Sitlow's arbitration case filed by the Philippines. China refuses to have a multilateral negotiation with other claimant countries of the Spratlys, Scarborough Shoal and Paracel Islands. China instead insists on bilateral talks, a strategy that plays to China's advantage as an emerging superpower, with growing military and economic advantage, to get the concession it wants from the much smaller countries. In addition, China doesn't want to internationalize the issue, and involve other parties like the United States and European Union, that will give the other claimants more leverage and backing, as this will negate whatever advantage China had, if it was to negotiate on a one-on-one -on -one basis. However, the single biggest factor that China fears most, is elevating the territorial road to the International Tribunal for the Laws of the Sea, or ITLOS, uncloses mandated court that has the power to settle disputes between party states, that includes China and the Philippines. In January 2013, the Philippines took China to ITLOS to challenge its so-called Nine-Dash claim that covers most of the sea, including waters and islands to its neighbors. The Philippine Foreign Secretary in an interview in Manila announced that the Philippines has exhausted almost all political and diplomatic avenues for a peaceful negotiated settlement of its maritime dispute with China. We hope that the arbitral proceedings shall bring this dispute to a durable solution. The Philippines in its submission says that Chinese 1947 line is illegal. It also noted that China's claim of sovereignty and jurisdiction over the waters mentioned in its diplomatic notes it had sent to United Nations General Secretary since the time are also illegal. It also demands that China desist from unlawful activities that violate the sovereign rights and jurisdiction of the Philippines under the 1982 UNCLOS. China has refused to participate, saying the case has no legal grounds, and is widely expected to reject any outcome it does not agree with. Most international law experts believe that China knows that it is in a very difficult position to defend its territorial claim, which is mostly based on ancient history. This is the main reason why it doesn't want the case to reach the UN tribunal. The Chinese government also tried to harass the Philippines in its arbitration case against China. In October 2013, Philippine President Benigno Aquino did not attend the China ASEAN Exposition held in China despite the Philippines being the country of honor, because the Chinese government had set the condition that the Philippines drop the arbitration case it filed against China before the UN tribunal. Within the ASEAN, China is secretly trying to influence other member states to undermine Philippines' position. Behind the scenes, Chinese diplomats are telling the Philippines' ASEAN peers that the case has no merit. However, China exhibits a double standard when it comes to unclose. As fast as China to ignore unclose provisions to justify its claims, it is even quicker to recognize them whenever it suits their agenda. In 2009, Chinese Navy and paramilitary vessels apprehended and drove away USNS Impeccable, a U.S. surveillance ship monitoring submarine activities 75 miles off of China's Hainan Island. China security defended its action and maintained that under the UNCLOS, navigation rights in coastal countries' exclusive economic zones are subject to the resource-related and environment-related laws and regulations of the coastal state. This is exactly the same UNCLOS provision that its Southeast Asian neighbors have in their complaints against China's overarching claim within their sovereign territories.